Hey guys, welcome to your Unit 5, Lesson 7 Notes on Parallel and Perpendicular Lines. We've seen parallel and perpendicular lines all around us. Parallel lines are lines that run parallel. They're, they're like the same, like these two L's next to each other, okay? Um, and perpendicular are very much not that. They go like this. They make a right angle like, like that. Um, they don't have to be vertical and horizontal. They can be like slanted or something. But anyway, so let's talk about them. By the end of the day, you'll be able to write equations of lines. That's super exciting um, for lines that are parallel or perpendicular to a given line. Let's just do this. It'll be great. Okay, so parallel lines look like this. And in the means of, of slope, you'll notice they have the same slope. Remember that slope is rise over run, so you take how far it takes them to go a certain distance. Rise over run, that's their slope. So if we look at this red line, um, it rises up. Um, where's another point? Here you go. It rises up three and goes over, or well, not three, whatever that distance is, one and a half. Um, it has that same rise over run rate throughout this whole line. And guess what? This other line, too, has the same rise over run rate up throughout the whole line. Isn't that great? So good. So there you go. That is slope, or that's parallel, having the same slope. Um, and if two lines are parallel, then we say, like, if this is line K, for example, and this is line L. Um, then well, uh, that came out super weird. But anyway, um, so you say line K is parallel to L. So you have those like that. Okay. Now, um, to determine whether graphs of lines are parallel, remember parallel means same slope. Same as in like they're equal, not sane as in the crazy, okay? And the best way to do that is to just put them in slope-intercept form. So that's nice. We can already tell that the slope of this line, oh, there's supposed to be an x there. My bad. Um, is negative 3 fourths. We don't know the slope of this line yet because um, it's not in slope-intercept form. We need to get this y all by itself to divide by 4, divide by 4. I'm just going to quick rewrite that, giving us y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3. So since those have the same slope, then yes, they are indeed parallel. Yep. Now let's graph each line to help us. Um, our first line, let's make this line k. Let's make this line L. Um, to graph line K, you start at minus 2, and then our slope is down 3 over 4, so we go down 1, 2, 3, we can go, oh, that was the wrong color, we get down 1, 2, 3, over 4, 2, 3, 4, yep. Um, and those are our points, so now we can connect them. Boop. Okay, so that is line K. And to graph line L, um, that's this guy right here. We go up 3, and then, so that's our intercept, and then our slope is down 3 minus 4. I feel like we just did this somehow. Sorry, not minus 4, but down 3 over 4 giving us a new point here, allowing us to connect these points like so. Man, that looks per pretty parallel to me. By the way, in this class, I will not trick you and I will not give you a line that's like, oh, <laughs> it's very close. <laughs> no, it'll, it will be obvious. It will be obvious if they're perpendicular or, par sorry, parallel. Let's try this again. Remember, you need to put them in slope-intercept form. Um, so to take 2y minus, sorry, equals 6x minus 5, we need to divide by 2 so that we have y equals 6x minus, sorry, 3. y equals 3x minus 2.5. Now, 
So we took that, rewrote them down here. Now that we have these two lines in slope, intercept, form. Yeah, no, these are not parallel because they don't have the same slope. But let's graph it just to be sure. Graphing our first line, if this is line K. Oh, we didn't label these, did we? We did. Why no? Okay, we go up 3. And our slope is negative 3. So we go down 3 over 1. I'm going to do uh, 2 just in case. Down 3 over 1. So we have points here and here. Making our lines go like that, basically. Okay, so that was line K, and this is line L. Starting at negative 2.5 and going up 3 over 1. Up 3 over 1. I'm sorry, I like motioned that to myself, but I didn't show it to you. We went up 3 over 1. Up 3 over 1. And guys, these lines are so not parallel. <laughs> They, they intersect, so they're not parallel. Nope, not parallel. Okay, cool. Well, that's half the lesson. Um, we talked about parallel lines. We can also talk about perpendicular lines. Um, but before we do, let's write the slope of a pair, or let's write the equation of a parallel line. Okay, remember, whenever you see parallel, go ahead and write same slope all the time. Parallel means same slope. Okay, so we need to write the equation in slope-intercept form of the line that's parallel to this line and passes through 2, 3. Well, all we need to know is the slope and a point. So here's our slope. Our slope is 6. And then we know our point here, 2, 3. We're going to recall what slope... Nope. Point slope form is. Uh, point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. m being our slope, of course, showing us how our graph moves. y1 being our point, sorry, the coordinate in our point, and x1 being the x coordinate in our point. So we're going to take all that information and substitute it in to our equation. Okay, we know that y1 is 3, we know that m is 6, and we know that x1 is 2. Super duper. Now this is an equation of the line. We could have that be our final answer. But the instructions asked for slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So we're going to solve for y. We need to get y all by itself. Um, let's just do it. Um, my first step, I'm going to simplify this part real quick by distributing my 6 to my x and my negative 2, giving us 6x minus 12. And then we have y minus 3, so we're going to add 3 to both sides to get y all by itself. But I'm going to add my 3 over here because that's like terms. So we have y equals 6x minus 12 plus 3 is a minus 9. Nailed it. Okay. That was parallel. Parallel means they have the same slope. Perpendicular means... it's mm, Perpendicular means they look like this. It means they form right angles. And what that works, what that looks like with slope, um, that means that when you multiply the two slopes together, so you get slope times the other slope, and you get negative one. That's how you know that the lines are perpendicular. Um, if you have line K and line L, instead of giving a parallel line like that, uh, we make a perpendicular line. Literally, it looks like that. So you say K is perpendicular to L. Um, what this means is the product, you multiply them together to get negative 1. So that's like saying if you have a, like, 
the slope of one line times the slope of the other line, that equals negative one. That's what it's going to be. What this means is we call them opposite reciprocals. So I might ask, are the slopes opposite reciprocals? And then you'll laugh at me because I don't know how to spell. <laughs> reciprocal. There you go. Then when you're done laughing at me because I don't know how to spell, um, you'll be able to tell me that opposite reciprocals are when you take a number and then you make it the opposite. Negative. That's what opposite means. Opposite means negative. And then a reciprocal means you flip it upside down. I don't know what's wrong with me about my spelling today. Okay, but you need to flip it upside down like that. Weep, weep, yeah, flip it. Okay, um, so we're going to take our two-thirds and flip it upside down to give us three halves. <laughs> okay, so uh, we say that, you know, let's, just, let's just do this. Um, opposite reciprocals multiply to negative one because we take two-thirds times three halves and you multiply across. Guess what that gives you? Well, that gives you, oops, sorry, this is a multiply. Wow. Um, that gives you two times three over three times two, but it's negative. Check out that negative. So sad. I'll highlight that negative. Negative. Opposite means negative. Ooh, that hurts your eyes. Now you're never going to forget it. Okay, so we've got a negative. Pop. Two thirds times three halves, which is negative six over six, which is negative one. Yay. So that's how you know they're opposite reciprocals. You flip them and you get negative one. A super easy way to find opposite reciprocals is if you have like five. Remember, that's like five over one. So to find its opposite reciprocal, you make it negative and then you flip it one fifth. That's a little bit easier to see. It's just kind of one over something. Because five times negative one fifth is negative one. So opposite reciprocals multiply to negative one. So if their slopes are opposite reciprocals, they'll multiply to negative one. So when you see perpendiculars, the your reminder is, oh, you want to multiply. But this isn't as easy as parallel. So that makes me want to think negative. So multiply to negative one. Bleh. Just like that. That's the sound it makes. Okay? So let's determine if two lines are perpendicular. All you have to do is look at their slopes. Our first one is already in slope-intercept form. That's super exciting. Oh, the next one's not. Okay. 4y equals x minus 5. So in order to get it in slope-intercept form, remember that's y equals mx plus b. We're trying to find out what is your slope. Well, here the slope is negative 4. So we divide by 4, divide by 4. We get y equals 1 fourth x minus 5 fourths. Here our slope is 1 fourth. Yay! So now we find the product of the slopes. Let's multiply them together, and we want them to be negative 1. Perpendicular means the slopes multiply to negative 1. Yay! Okay, so let's do it. Negative 4 times 1 fourth equals... Um, well, that's the same thing as 4 for 1. Okay, so negative 4 times 1. Oh, I like that. That's negative 4. Okay, 1 times 4, that's easy too. That's 4. Oh, those 4s cancel out, giving us negative 1. <gasps> Y'all, we did it. They're perpendicular. Yes. Ta-da. Okay, well, let's graph them. To graph our first line, we have 
y equals negative 4x plus 3. So we go up 3, and then negative 4x. So we go down 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, down here. Let's do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, down here. That's one line. Super duper. And then the other line was 1 fourth x minus 5 fourths. Okay, well, minus 5 fourths is down here. And then you go up 1 over 4. So up 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to be like there. Cool. Well, let's connect those lines. I mean, connect those points with a line. Ta-da! Does that look parallel? I mean, it looks looks parallel to me. I mean, I lied. That does not look parallel. But it does look perpendicular. Got that nice right angle. Oops. That nice right angle. Looks like a plus sign. And guys, for this class, as long as it's close, like, I'm not going to try to trick you and give you, like, 89 degrees. No, that is a solid 90 degree angle. That's perpendicular. Good job. Okay, well, what if I give you a line? And you need to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form. Oh, slope-intercept. Y equals mx plus b. Cool. Of the line that is perpendicular. Remember, perpendicular means it looks like that. Um, and the slopes multiply to negative 1. So you have one slope. Multiply it times the negative. Excuse me. Negative one. Okay. So the graph of, ooh, that's weird. I don't even know what that slope is. Okay, well, let's figure out what the slope is. So if we have 2x plus 3y equals 2, and we need to find the slope, we just need to get it in slope-intercept form, which is this, this guy right here. Okay, I just need to get y all by his wonderful self. So let's start by subtracting 2x on both sides, giving us 3y equals negative 2x plus 2. By the way, if this is fast, pause the video, rewind. it would be great. And then we still need to get our wonderful y all by himself. So we're dividing by 3, dividing everything by 3. We have y equals negative two-thirds of x plus two-thirds. Sweet. And that tells us our slope is negative two-thirds. So the slope we want then, we want to find out, okay, what's the opposite reciprocal? We need our slope to be the opposite reciprocal. So we're going to take a negative and it needs to be the reciprocal, so we need to flip out. Okay, so if we take our negative two-thirds, first we're going to take negative negative two-thirds, which is just two-thirds. And then to flip out, we need to flip switch. We need to flip a switch. Uh -huh. The two and the three are going to switch spots, giving us three halves. So the slope we want is 3 halves. Okay, so now that we know our slope is going to be 3 halves, we know our point up here is 3, 0. I'm going to just rewrite that real quick. 3, 0 is our point. 3, 0, okay. That's our x1. That's our y1. And what did we say our slope was? 3 halves. We'll start out with point slope form. Remember, point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now it's time to plug and chug. Ah, okay, here we go. Um, so that gives us y minus 0 equals 3 halves of x minus 3. Now let's take that guy, put him in slope-intercept form, 
by getting y all by itself. But check it out, guys. Minus zero does nothing. So we can just say, ha ha, bye. And he's almost in slope intercept form. All we need to do is distribute our three halves. Okay, so we have y equals three halves times x minus three halves times three. Because we took our three halves, distributed it to both terms, and now we just need to simplify. Three is the same thing as three over one. So three times three, sorry. Ooh, ooh, I'm not lazy, I'm energy efficient. Okay, three times three is nine. Two times one is two, and we're gonna leave it like that because I love I love fractions. Um, if you want to trade your nine halves for four point five, you can. But I'm gonna leave it. That's great. You guys, we did it! Yay! Okay, key idea of the day: perpendicular means the slopes. They look like this. They look like a plus sign, and the slopes multiply to negative one. Parallel means they look like this, and the slopes are the same. Aww. Guys, parallel lines have so much in common. It's a shame they never meet. Rip. Have a wonderful time on your homework.